Welcome back to Mofro's Reef. I'm Wayne, and today I'm going to go over my first thoughts of the 2016 Apex. A little nervous about spending that much money on a, on a control unit, but it's already saved me once, and I'm going to go over some of the, the basic stuff. I, honestly, I, I can't give it a review. I don't think I'm an experienced enough to give it a review. I mean, the capabilities of this piece of equipment is just, it's above and beyond what in my experience level is at right now, but I'm going to show you exactly what I did and, uh, and how I'm using it. Okay, first things first, I had to buy an extra power cable to plug into the bottom of the head unit there just for when the power goes out. So it knows the power goes out because if you just have your energy bar plugged into a battery backup, it doesn't know if the power goes out. So I have the head unit plugged into the wall. I have the uh, EB8 plugged into my battery backup and I'm going to show you exactly what happens when you lose power. Honestly, I don't think you can put a price tag on this, especially when you get a fully stocked tank. I'm gonna unplug this as if the power were to go out. These pumps here are now running at 10%. This pump here is on for an extra minute and then it shuts off just in case there's a brownout so it doesn't you know go on and off and you can hear all this noise over here my personal phone and my business phone both send you alerts immediately okay then you come over here and this is my battery backup right here and if you look it shows uh, I have 80 minutes to run my pumps until this thing dies so I don't care where I'm at working I'm dropping my tools and I'm coming home and I'm gonna fire up my generator when I have this system fully stocked there's gonna be quite a bit of money in this thing so now the power just came back on I get more updates through text messages on my phones saying that the power is back on which is pretty cool everything's kicking back on doing good now I'm going to show you what actually happened to me. Okay, here's my leak probe right here. So I'm just going to turn this upside down. And I was filling up my auto top-off container here. And I got called upstairs because something was going on with the dog. And I had a tube run into this and I was filling it up. It overflowed. It overflowed into my stand. But if you watched my, my build video on my stand, I have a piece of vinyl sitting on the bottom here so that it's not bare wood and I siliconed all the seams all the way up to here and all the joints in the corners. So I mean I didn't get much water in here, it was maybe a half inch but it was completely contained, it worked awesome. The only thing was my phones were upstairs and uh, I came back down here and the head unit here doesn't have an alarm. So what I had to do was... I bought just like a little $3 3 to 24 volt alarm because if I was down here and that alarm went off I could have stopped it immediately and I would have caught it but I started hearing the water drip and I'm like oh shit <laughs> you know it was definitely an oh shit moment but this is what happens now let me just put some water on my fingers here okay alarm goes off pumps go off and then once again, I get updates on my phone. And I mean, that's priceless. My return pumps turns off. I, everything turns off except my waves. Them, them stay on. Just keep everything flowing in the tank. So that goes over my power outage and my leak protectors. Now I'm going to take you over to the actual... You can see my soul. 34.4, staying pretty consistent. Temperatures at 78, pH is 8.15, ORP is at 223. And then this is all the equipment that I have that's actually running the system right here. And I did get into, uh, I mean, you, you do have to write some codes on some of this stuff. If you read the comprehensive manual, it's it, it explains it. It's, it's really, it's not that intimidating. And the community forums, they're pretty cool. I had to get on them once and ask about the uh, the alarm system and you know everybody's pretty friendly man as long as you do your part and try to research it and if you don't know the answers everybody's more than willing to help you out 
if you go on here blind and just start demanding that you want stuff, I mean, you're going to piss people off. That's just the way it is. Check this out. You can actually see how the graph works. You know, when your stuff starts climbing up, you know, my ammonia's never tested. My calcium, you know, 415, 415, 430, 425, 425. It's, it's just so cool just to actually be able to see the graph on how things work. You can have notes for, for everything that you, that you put in here. You know, I come over to here, miscellaneous, you know, first water change, fed the corals of Zeovit system one through four. I put in here, Hollywood has uh, a fish disease. Everything is just documented and it, it makes it so much easier because you don't have to look at a hard copy. It's on every device you have right there in front of you so you can see. And then you have like uh, reminders, you know, right here if you put something on the calendar, which is really cool, it'll pop up. Hey, today's the day to uh, change my Zeovit out of my, uh, my reactor. You know, you can't forget. I'm, I'm gonna look at this thing every day, regardless of, you know, if I don't come down or if I'm too busy. I mean, most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, I, I am going to come down and check on my, my system, you know, regardless of what I'm doing. If I'm at home, I'm gonna check on it. But if I'm like on a, on a vacation, you know, I got this. One thing I also do have is I do have the Amcrest uh, high def security camera that I can hook up and show in here. But other than that, the Apex is, it's, it's more, more capable than anything I ever imagined. I mean, just the security features of having it give you the notifications if you have a leak or if your power goes out. I mean, that right there, honestly, it is priceless. The amount of money we're going to end up having in our systems to take care of our pets, it's just, it's an absolute must. On that last note, I added some more fish. I got a tragic story to tell. I put Lino in this tank. You can see where I have my, my magnetic veggie clip here. I had this right about here so I could get to it easily. He was in here for two days. His eye was almost back to absolute perfect. And I have a chevron tang in here, and he's trying to be the boss. And I'm thinking Leno came to eat some, some veggies late at night. Chevron tang came and got him, and Leno was way over there by the TV. I'm so upset, man. I can't believe. I didn't have a cover on the top. I killed my fish. One of my favorite fish. I'm pretty pissed. My 100-gallon, like I said, I've been running a reef tank for three years. And I've never had a top on this, but you can see it's got these big lips on here. There's, unless the fish jump right out the middle, the cover that came across the front here. And I've never had a fish jump out of my tank. Well, I ordered the screen top net from uh, BRS. That should be here tomorrow. So from here on out, I will have a top on here. Learn your lesson once again. I can't believe, I can't believe I killed him, man. I'm, I'm Pretty upset with myself as much time and effort as I tried to heal him and he healed too man and he was in here for two days and then I don't know guess he needed some fresh air a little too much of it Blasto is still not coming out he, that's the only coral that I'm having issues with and honestly it's not the light because nothing else in here is is closing up the number one sign I always find if you know your lights a little heavy you know, your Zoas will, will kind of contract, your Duncans will, I mean, nothing. I, I, I'm running my lights, my blues on my lights here are maxed out at 50%, my violets at 40, my UVs at 30, my green, reds, and whites are at 20% when they're at, at their photo period. So, pretty sure I'm not running too much light on this system. Um, I did put my anemone in here, one of them. I originally stuck him on the back side of here. So in four days, he crawled across here, crawled up here, crawled over here, stung this birds of paradise, crawled around the back side of that Monty, sat down right there for a day, crawled back up that branch over there, sat over there for a half a day, crawled back up, went around back over here, and now he's been here for uh, about a day. I don't think he's gonna stay there though. Honestly, I don't think he's uh, he's getting enough light 
He's probably going to move again. But my clowns are just loving it. Absolutely loving it. All right, well, I'm going to shut up and uh, give you a quick view. A tour of the tank. Oh, one more thing. How I killed that, uh, that SPS, that purple monster there. Well, I went back to the LFS and I bought another one. Did the same exact thing and I acclimated it. And as you can see, it's been in here for two days and it is alive. They gave me a really good price on it because I told them I killed it. These two over here, I, I'm not sure what's going on. They're not white. They look like there's a purple tint to them. I don't know. My first thoughts is they're dead, but I don't know. We'll keep them in here and see what happens. We'll see what happens. My water's been a little bit cloudy as of lately, as you can see. My diatoms, about three days ago, started dying off. So it kind of clouded the water for a little bit. That's why I haven't done a video. It looks like it's starting to clear up a little bit today. It's still not 100%. But it's looking a lot better.